Could you do Inktober all in one day? Well, if you're going for beautiful finished masterpieces, no. If you're my grandma and don't know what Inktober is, it's this monthly online tradition where artists share Halloween-themed prompt lists to try to complete one by one for every day of October. It's a rough challenge many have tried and failed, because that's not very long to come up with and make a finished beautiful masterpiece, and life is unpredictable sometimes. Sometimes you have lots of time in a day to work on your Inktober piece. Sometimes you don't have any whatsoever. Sometimes you can't even think of what to do next. The rules are largely self-imposed, so some people might go and make up for the work that they miss, whereas someone else might consider that a failure and stop. The one year I really tried to do Inktober, I had gotten so behind with them I didn't even feel like it was worth trying to do any sort of makeup work. And every year since, I've always been so busy on October. I think about Inktober every year and I always really wanna... So we're doing it this year! When we're about 20 days into the month already? We'll just speedrun it and see how far I can get. I don't know, we might be presently surprised. Speedrun. Speedrun. Day one. The title is already a lie. I failed the challenge. It took me forever to find a prompt I liked. I kept thinking I'd just wing it and draw whatever came to mind, but as I drew a blank thinking about what that would even be, I started scouring the internet for prompts. I thought about Gortober a bit, but it, it's more complicated than something I could draw quickly. So I figured it looked bad and lame. So we shall go with this one, Serena's 2017 Inktober prompt. I like this one because it just had things I already wanted to draw in it. Thank you, Serena. I then also pulled out these watercolor cards because I thought a smaller drawing would be easier to get through than trying to force myself through 30 full-size drawings. It wasn't gonna happen, but it could feasibly happen with little watercolor note cards. Though I only had 20 of these, uh, I was anticipating having to cut some paper to size, but that won't end up being an issue. I also pulled out something I got from a painting kit over a decade ago. This Chinese ink stone and stick. You put a little bit of water in the stone and grind out the stick to release the ink. It's pretty cool, but I have no idea if this ink is good quality or all, or if the time it's spent in my drawer hasn't ruined it by now. I also wanted to pull out this little tube of red watercolor that came with the ink set, but I quickly fucked that up while I was prepping everything. I thought the red had dried up, so I cut open the back, it wasn't dried up, it all came gushing out and I panicked and wasted most of it. So the red watercolor makes sparse appearances using the little bit of it I salvaged. First prompt is cozy. I decided against going in order of the prompt list. I'm doing what I want. Who cares? I can do whatever I want. Cozy is first! This one accidentally set the tone for all the other pieces, in terms of all of them being my original characters in some kind of costume related to their prompt. I realize there's not a lot of information about these characters, and so it's a bit difficult figuring out how to talk about them exactly, because I don't want to go on a giant rant explaining who the hell I'm drawing every time, nor do I think you want to hear that, but I do need to keep you in the loop of what I'm doing. Uh, eventually, I think what I'm gonna do as a compromise for now, until I start making more comics and stuff, is I'll just try to flesh out my toy house. That way you can actually read about these characters rather than the little blurb that I have there for everyone, since I mostly just use it as an art archive. I'll link it down below, you could read that in the future, but in the meantime, for the sake of this video, I'll just kind of drive by mention anything you need to know about them for the sake of this project. Speaking of which, this little gal is JD, and she got cozy because she's like seven, and thus an easy opportunity to surround with pillows and stuffies and blankets. When I started, I imagined putting her in like a snuggy thing. I was working on this on stream and I was told to make her hoodie thing a skeleton, which made me feel like it should be like footy pajamas instead so you can see the bone patterns on her leg rather than a big blanket. Give her this big patchwork bat, Pumpkin, Squishmallow, Spider, and Frank and Dolly. Since this is the first one I did, I noticed that the ink fades pretty quick. I'd had to keep layering it on to get darker colors. 
even if I tried to load up as much ink as possible initially. Kind of weird. So I ended up using Sharpies a lot to bring in some solid black. By the way, Sharpie of all things, because it's like bleed proof. So the wet ink that was already down, or applying more water wouldn't mess with it at all. Like I said, I worked on this on stream. Even though I did start the next prompt, I guess I was too tired from the day to get up to the pace I wanted. This pattern continues for the next two days. I'm gonna put these two together because they're similar. Day three, I chose the prompt Fall Witch because I already wanted to draw a witch and this one just enabled me to do so. It was actually a big part of why I chose Serena's list in the first place. This gal Silver. She's normally a jester, but I like the idea of interpreting the long horns of her jester hat into a big, bendy witch hat with a bell at the end. At the time, I was kind of blanking on how to make her more clearly a fall witch, aside from the little leaves. Maybe if she was more bundled up in a coat and scarf, that would help. I don't know, the orange and brown that make it really obvious weren't available to me. Also, just when I thought maybe ink just doesn't blend and layers on top of each other, while I was shading this silver, all of the shadows ended up blending together. It was so weird, I don't know what I did differently there. Continuing, day four, this prompt was Raven. This one was actually not Uncle Noe's idea, to draw Silver's partner in crime Kai dressed like a bird. My vision for this one was a big feather cloak with big black feathers floating everywhere. Though everything else about the outfit I wasn't sure about, so he ended up in this weird Edward Scissorhandsy kind of thing. I don't know. I don't think it looks bad, but not what I would have done if I haven't drawn it all on the spot, you know? I think in my head I was imagining something Bloodborne-esque, because that's where I got the idea for the cloak. But I got really invested in the idea of making sure everything on his person kind of blends together, whereas like when you look at it, he kind of just looks like a big black blob of feathers. That's what I really wanted. I didn't use much ink here. This one ended up being mostly fine liners in Sharpie, with a little bit of ink to darken up the lightest parts. Though not as much as I would have wanted. I'm kind of really into these designs for these two. Honestly, I might revisit the idea of Silver the Witch and Kai the Raven familiar. I feel like it'd be kind of neat. This is the day I locked in. Now that an empty day has finally arrived, I accepted that 31 isn't happening. I settled on 10, and I took a moment to pick another 8 prompts and sketch them all out before I start coloring everything. I'm gonna edit this in such a way so you'll see each piece from start to finish so it's easier for you to keep up with, but just know, there was actually a lot of back and forth thing happening. I sketched them all at once, I lined them all at once, and I went back to paint them all at once even switching between some of them while they dried. So yeah. First up is Circus. I thought Z'd make a nice one for this one. If you saw the Seven Deadly Sins designed as emo characters video, you might be familiar with the antagonist of this story, but I don't think I showed off the protagonist at all. This is Z. She's a zombie who, despite being dead, refuses to go to hell. Because the point of her story and her character is, is to reference the kind of stuff I made in 7th grade, I made her line art really sketchy and messy, and instead of the ink, I went and colored her with some cheat markers of mine, complete with a red sky I've colored with Sharpie, which I don't have any evidence of, but I do know for a fact that I did at some point in middle school. Actually, I'm really glad I pulled out the red Sharpie, because like the black, it lays on dark and solid, and I don't trust that red watercolor. Stitches, like Silver as a Witch, is something I knew I already wanted to draw, but I'm glad I found a prompt list that just happened to have both. One year where I was yearning for Inktober, and life got in the way before I could even try to do what I wanted, I was imagining a series of my OCs as, like, horror characters. Not quite what I'm doing here. These are mostly Halloween costumes. I wanted to make them, like, scary. The first and only one I ever did was the idea of pin cushion malice, because her whole thing is selling, where she was tied in thread and covered in pins and needles and everything. I don't know if I'm going to be able to find that drawing again, but I do remember for some reason I only put the pins and needles in her arms. I'm like half resurrecting that idea here. Red thread and needles stitching her whole body together. I like the shading I got in this one, although it was a bit sexier than I meant for it to be. I guess because she's not wearing much and I tend to draw malice with this tall hourglassy figure. 
I think because I treat her like a fashion model most of the time. This one, on the other hand, horns, I did mean for it to be sexy. Edith, my obligatory MILF, gets to be a succubus. It's just the law of the universe and I am simply a vessel. Though I was very invested in giving her spooky, misty, demon energy arms. That only kinda came out how I wanted, so in my opinion, it's kinda hard to look at anything else. I kept blotting more ink, hoping it'd create blotchy patches, and like, it kinda did, but it wasn't nearly as dark as I wanted it to be. It all mostly blended together and smoothed out into like a dark gray rather than the cloudy blotches. I don't know, I'm not happy with it. I added eyes to the gaps that I had left for them, or any other gap that I feel like I could put an eye, an eye in. And I just kind of took my L there. I'm sure there's some way to achieve what I was imagining, but I guess I didn't go about it right. Or maybe it just needed more layers of paint. I was starting to struggle coming up with ideas. So I asked Noe and Mattoon for one of their OCs in hopes that it, that would spark some inspiration. I also specifically asked them for one of their boy OCs, since I've drawn like five girls. Mattoon gave me his feral son of a dragon, Marcus, mostly because he's the only character his I haven't drawn yet. While I thought about doing jack-o'-lantern for him, I didn't want to just draw him holding it or more in character, smashing or eating it. Everyone else has been in some sort of costume. So I thought it'd be interesting to try to attempt transparency and use Ghost for his prompt. I grabbed one of the markers I used for Z's piece, the clown one, because it was lighter, and I outlined him with that and only used the fine liners on his chains. Well, looking back, that idea doesn't make much sense, because that implies the chains are non-ghostly. But I, I think at this point, it was around 4 or 5 in the morning, so I was rationing my brain cells, since I still had three drawings to go. One side effect of using that marker is that that one actually bled when I applied water. Which actually I did like in this case. I felt like it was blurring his ghostly form. I don't know, I thought it was cool. I was happier with this one until the moment I showed my mom. And she said she didn't think he looked transparent. She thought he just looked unfinished. Uh, if that didn't work, I don't know how else I would have gotten that effect across. Noe's sacrifice is Methoda, another punk kid and resident of the Y2K style future France. I don't know much about this guy, to be honest, aside from his general intimidating aura, but I gave him a pumpkin head regardless because he gets jack-o'-lantern, as well as some bones on his shirt and in place of his flame tattoo, and I filled his hoodie backpack with candy. I'm straight up not happy with this one, to be honest. I don't think it's bad, really, but I, I think it needed to be worked on a bit more. Maybe a bit more of like, maybe if I had treated it more like Z's one with like the thicker cartoonier outlines and then tried darkening everything up with the cheap markers. I don't know, maybe that would have helped what's bothering me. Though honestly, at this point, because I was working through an all-nighter, I could feel myself running out of steam at this point. I was trying really hard not to rush anything. One more after this. Uh, the sun was up at this point. My hand was shaking. I was trying very, 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 very hard not to rush everything, fighting how much I yearned to launch myself into bed. This picture is a bit of a victim of that, regardless, though. This is the last one I sketched out, last prompt I picked, last character I picked. This is Inked, their little monster guy, literal gremlin who likes breaking things and eating things they shouldn't, and being generally a nuisance. And they got Moth. If I could redo this one, I'd probably make it horizontal and have them eating the moths rather than cutely posing with them the way they are. Also, I used that red watercolor here, and I was right to be scared of it! It's blotchy and ugly, and all fucked up after sitting in my palette for four days. Complete waste of paint! I was kinda out of patience for the weirdness of ink. Ink the material, not this character. Their name is Ink. Duh. You see, there's a D, it's a verb. And finally, the last one. This prompt is blood. I actually almost did Moth last instead of this one, but... 
I knew because I cared about this one more, I should do it last. That way I don't just give up on it because I'm tired. I care about this one because it's arguably one of my favorite characters I've made. His name's Neon. When I first made him, he was like a cat, hybrid, cyborg, non-consensual science experiment. He had a cybernetic arm and an eye. And when I changed him, because that story's bad and cringe, I took away his cybernetic parts but never gave him his eye or arm back. At one point I had drawn this picture, but I'm positive I had drawn it when I had still no idea what his new story was going to be. So kind of a redraw, kind of a reference. The idea here, the moment he lost that arm in the current iteration of his story. Yuna is an adventure, heavily involved with witches and magic. He lost his eye in a magical deal, but his arm was a mistake, an adventuring mishap. Almost entering a cursed room, a sword-clad companion acted fast and saved his life. As you can see and imagine, having your arm suddenly sliced off isn't a pleasant experience. I feel like via being a liquid medium, the blood looks really good here, even if the splash pattern it's in doesn't make much sense. The clumpy red watercolor ended up coming in clutch here? So, something kind of funny, because at this point I was starting to get kind of delirious, I remember thinking as I was lining his face, like, hmm, this is kind of an unattractive face he's making, maybe I should change it. As if any normal human could be making a cute face while getting their arm sliced off, like, <laughs> it would be weirder if he wasn't doing a horrible grimace. I don't know. I was very tired at that point. But, I was done. Well, now that I'm basically out of time, that is still a third of Inktober in five days. Four of you exclude the prep and only consider the time I spent actually drawing. But that's basically like doing two a day. Except, as you saw, I didn't do two a day at all. I did nothing for one day, one a day for three days, and eight on the last day because I was running out of time. I guess if I had kept it up and kept pulling all-nighters, I would need two more days to finish off Inktober if I had done eight in a day. Though that'd be torturous, and 100% your art would suffer. I tried really hard to prevent it and to keep myself from rushing, from losing interest, but drawing things just to get them done, like their makeup work, isn't good. Neither is staying up all night for that matter. Plus, the part that I felt slowed everything down was the amount of time I spent trying to come up with what I draw for the prompts. Frying your brain would only slow the process down even further. I think the only practical way to do all 31 days of Inktober, one day at a time the way that you're supposed to, is to do like Doodletober, where instead of, instead of beautiful finished masterpieces every day, you take anywhere from 5 to 30 minutes to sketch out the prompt. Maybe add a splash of color if you have extra time. Or make a bunch in one day to create a buffer between you and days you can't work on your challenge. I think the best option is probably those shorter Inktober challenges that keep in mind people's lives. Like anywhere from 15 to have a challenge every other day. The one a week ones, or maybe even one big Halloween piece you spend all month on. I don't know, I'm glad I got a little Inktober out of my system. Clearly I enjoy torturing myself as much as any artist. I hope you liked it. By the end, I don't really feel like I got a good understanding of how ink works. I think a lot of because, you know, the, the rushing, just trying to get shit done mentality that went into this. But I had fun trying, and I think that's about it. I, I don't recommend this. I don't recommend... I don't recommend torturing yourself and ruining the, the quality of your work for the sake of getting things done quick. I don't know. Thank you for watching me torture myself for Halloween.